Hey everyone, we're on lesson 93, um, and this one is comparing information, it's comparative graphs. So, uh, we're just going to use what the book has because it's hard to draw all these graphs, but let's think about, they display two or more sets of related data, so they're comparing two things. So, if you remember, a graph always has a title, it has labels on the x-axis and labels on the y-axis. So this one's comparing average daily high temperatures. So that's how we know what the graph is about. And then we come down here and look at the x-axis. We have Rome, Caracas, Sydney, Paris, Tokyo. So we're comparing one, two, three, four, five different locations. But for each location, we're comparing the temperature in January and July. Oh, cool. Okay. So in, and this is in degrees Fahrenheit. So in Rome in January, it is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. In Rome in July, it's 90 degrees almost. Looks like not quite 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Huh. Okay. Well, that's good. So now we know what we're working with. Um, remember, if they skip a line, these are equal intervals always on a graph. So remember that is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and this goes up to 100. So you can fill it in if you want to, you don't have to. Um, okay, so let's take a look. In which city was the average July temperature, so the dark blue, the highest? So I can just glance at this graph and see which is the tallest dark blue bar. So it's this one right here, right? Because nothing else comes up to that line. So it's Rome. So the answer for that one's Rome. In which city was the average January? So the light blue high temperature, the lowest. So now I'm looking at the light blues and looking to see which is the smallest bar. And it's this one right here, isn't it? Whew, so look how high in Sydney in January. It's because it's in the Southern Hemisphere. Okay, so that one was Paris, right? Okay. Which city had the smallest range between those temperatures? So we're looking for where those bars are almost at the same spot, where the temperature doesn't change very much. So let's look in Venezuela. You know, I said Caracas, but I'm not sure. I think that's right. Anyway, Venezuela. So it's 70 in January, and it's not quite 80 in July, so it's only not even 10 degrees difference in temperature. Everywhere else, it's a pretty good amount of difference. So I'm gonna go with Venezuela. I'm gonna go with Carac Caracas. Again, if I'm saying that wrong, sorry. Okay, um, for which temperature is the average January, so I'm looking at the light blue, greater than the average July? Oh, look. We already answered that, didn't we? And it's Sydney, Australia. It's a bigger, taller, greater temperature in January than in July because it's on the bottom part of the earth. Um, let's see. So I'm going to write Sydney here. Okay. Um, this one's right near the equator, it says. So temperatures don't vary as much. You know how Florida, we don't get nearly as cold uh, as, we, as in like the Northeast. Same idea for uh, Venezuela. And then Sydney is in the Southern Hemisphere. So that one's pretty easy. Remember your graph has your title, your labels on both axes, and then sometimes a key that gives you a little bit more information, okay? Let's look at example two. We can use a double line graph to show how two or more things change in relation to one another. Okay, so this one doesn't have a title. They left a title off, but they're telling us here in the um, problem what the title could be. So let's see if we can think of a good one. The double line graph below shows the change in population of the cities of Austin and Pittsburgh from 1950 to 2000. So could it be population in Austin and Pittsburgh? That might be a good title. 
So we know that the dark line with the filled in circles is Austin. So this line right here is Austin. And the lighter line with the open circles is Pittsburgh. So we'll put Pitt right there, okay? Um, and we know that this is the population numbers and this is the years. So that I like to look at all of my information ahead of time before I actually read the questions. Some people work the other way. You still have to know both things. You can do it in whichever ever order you'd like. So approximately what was Austin's population in 1970? So Austin is the one with the filled in circles. Here's 1970. So I'm going to go up there and then go back over. So I'm going up and over. And I see that it's between 200,000 and 300,000, maybe a little bit closer to the three, maybe 260,000, 250,000, something like that, right? Okay, now let's think about Pittsburgh population's decrease. Uh-oh, that's not good. So they started at 700,000. So it's this line right here, 700,000. And then in 2000, it was, oh, oops, got to go over here and look. It was 350,000, more or less, right? So if I'm looking for a decrease, I'm subtracting. So I'm going to do my subtraction. And it's 350, so it decreased, cut in half by 350,000, right? Huh. That's interesting. Okay, so I see that it decreased. Again, it's looking at what information they're providing and what format they're providing it, okay? So, lesson practice. Um, I've got a student. They each wrote two stories. So there's the student, here's her first story, here's her second story. And this tells how many paragraphs per story. Again, I like a title. So this would be paragraphs per story or something. Um, I think it's helpful, but they always tell you in the word problems. So you have to make a comparative horizontal. Which way is horizontal? This way is horizontal, right? Like the horizon bar graph to show. Um, so it's almost like we're gonna take this graph here but turn it this way. So a horizontal bar graph would be like this. So this might be the first kid. This might be story one, story two. Second kid, story one, story two. Third kid, story one, story two. So whatever way works best for you, okay? Um, I think that's it. it. Let me know if you have any problems. Um, I think reading graphs is probably easier than making them, but you can make them. You can do this. So good luck.